My 13-year-old acts like a puppy again. Almost overnight, she's a different dog. Perfect poops. When people switch their dog's food to the farmer's dog, the effects can seem like magic. But there's no magic involved. It's simply real meat and vegetables with all the nutrients dogs need, instead of highly processed pellets. No tricks, just smarter, healthier pet food delivered in packs portioned for your dog. It's amazing what real food can do. Get 50% off your first order at thefarmersdog.com slash nomagic50. If you're in the market for investment-worthy bags, watches, and fine jewelry, Rebag is the answer. Rebag is a luxury resale marketplace where each piece is carefully vetted and verified by experts to ensure quality and authenticity. If you're in the market, use Rebag to buy and sell finds from the world's top brands, including Hermes, Chanel, and Cartier. Head to Rebag.com to get 10% off your first purchase with code REBAG10. Shop today at Rebag.com. That's R-E-B-A-G.com. And use promo code REBAG10 for 10% off your first purchase. Purchase. I'm Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. And I'm Michael Swain of Fog.net. This is a replay of WIBW show The Drive. Here's this week's episode on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. Good evening, Wildcat and JF fans, and welcome to The Drive, sponsored by Berg's Auto Group. I am Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. And the man way over there is Michael Swain of Fog. Dot net. Uh, Michael, I, I've been traveling all day, coming back from Pittsburgh slash West Virginia, um, but my game was more fun to cover. Uh, a lot more fun to cover, and I've been at home writing all day, so the exact <laughs> opposite of you. Yeah, it, uh, it's been a long day. You can interact with us on social media at Facebook.com slash The Drive Show, on Twitter at The Drive 13, and of course, answer our weekly poll question and make your game predictions on our Twitter page. And remember, if you ever miss an episode of The Drive, you can listen to an audio-only version that will appear each Monday morning in the form of a podcast at GoPowerCat and Fog.net. And we start things off with our two-minute drill. The first segment of the two-minute drill sponsored by Vanderbilt's Your Work Boot Center. All right, Fitz. Kansas State went into West Virginia, and the game with the Mountaineers turned into a first-half shootout. What did we learn about the Wildcats in their 48-31 to victory? I, I tell you what I learned from a personal standpoint. Don't bet the under. Um, look, this game was crazy. And, you know, you when you cover the Big 12, you can dream up all these scenarios how game's going to go. This was not in my book of how it would go with West Virginia giving K-State's defense so many issues. This is K-State defense, as I mentioned last week, has held three Big 12 teams without a touchdown in a game. And West Virginia just went wild for a while. K-State gets off to the 14-0 start. You think this is going to be an absolute route because what is West Virginia playing for? And all of a sudden, West Virginia puts together a drive, and the teams actually traded pick sixes. It was absolutely incredible. Both quarterbacks made mistakes in the first quarter through interceptions. West Virginia missed their extra point. And while West Virginia put up a fight, um, I think it was 41-25 at halftime, this game never really felt like it was in question for K-State. It felt like they were going to be able to score if they needed to because they really could. And after all of those points in the first half, the second half score was 7-6. to six. Um, And it was just a crazy, crazy day and how things switched. But K-State really did kind of slow things down in the second half, took the air out of it a little bit, uh, and just, you know, try to get the game calmed down because it was getting a little chaotic. And that's exactly what uh, the opposing team uh, wants to do if you're the underdog. Look, Will Howard played really well again. He made a mistake, he threw the pick, it was returned for a touchdown, and you wondered, uh-oh, how will this play out now for a young quarterback who uh, has not responded well to mistakes? Well, the maturity showed up once again. The experience showed up again. He went out there and immediately led another scoring drive. And he said after the game, the old Will Howard probably wouldn't have handled it well, but this Will Howard said, okay, we made a mistake, let's go correct that. And it was absolutely a blast to watch him. He made nice throws. And Mike, what he does really well that a lot of K-State quarterbacks haven't done, he puts his receivers in a position after the catch to make something happen. As we just saw in that highlight, Malik Knowles catches the ball, he's able to turn up field and, and get away from the defender. He finds Ben Sennett constantly now uh, in another great throw and touchdown at, for uh, the big tight end. It's, it's really fun to watch Will Howard dealing right now. And if he continues to play this way, K-State's going to be really hard to beat. That they are, and I think Will Howard is a great example of why college football is fun. Yeah. Development, right? You remember him playing in 2020, and you think about the quarterback that you're seeing now. It's worlds of difference, and he's a big reason why Kansas State is probably going to play in the Big 12 title game and have a really, really good shot of winning it. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to see how much better he's gotten. 
Well, Michael, Jalen Daniels returned to the field on Saturday, but KU was blown out by Texas. What did you make of the performance from Daniels and the Jayhawks? I mean, where to start? Yeah. I think you have to go with Daniels, at least at the beginning. Um, making his return after five weeks out, after separating his shoulder against TCU, he didn't look like the same quarterback that I think you saw early in the season. I think it's a telling sign when his first throw from scrimmage was almost a pick six. Those are the throws that Jalen Daniels did not make early in the season. He did not have very many turnover worthy plays early in the season either. And what made this KU offense so dynamic over the first three games of the season was the RPO and also the option runs that KU would do. Jalen Daniels ran the ball twice against Texas on Saturday and looked pretty reluctant to do it. That's a big change. I think that shows that Daniels was playing while not being 100%. Okay, your quarterback wasn't great, but look, you're not gonna win any games if you're giving up over 50 points defensively. Texas ran for 427 yards, the most rushing yards allowed by KU since 2014. This is a team that has really struggled to stop the opposing run game. And when you go up against a running back like Bijan Robinson, in a game like that, he's gonna make you look silly. And I think this is a KU defense that has regressed as the season has gone along. It has not been as impressive as it was early in the year. I mean, Fitz, there were times early in the season when KU was averaging about 115 yards allowed on the ground per game. They're now north of 200 over their last six games. It's just not a team that is playing really good defensive football. And for KU to win games at this time of the year, they have to play complimentary football from top to bottom. And that's just not been the case. And so I think you put it all together and that's why this was an uncompetitive game. And Lance Leipold said at post game, there were some players that were emotional after the game. They want to compete, they want to win. He said he wishes the whole team was like that. That's subliminal messaging for, I think the rest of the team needs to compete at a high level like some of the other players were. And I think that for me is almost more concerning than the result itself. It's seeing some of that. And I think it shows too, you're still in the process of rebuilding a program that has not been good. And so I think it speaks to the work that still has to go on with kind of improving the culture. Is this an issue where they've had enough injuries on the defense side of the ball, they've just kind of watered down the quality of the product? Fits, there are barely any injuries on defense. Ah. I think it's a unit that is just kind of getting worn down. I think teams have found out how they can attack KU, and I think the secret's out. Yeah, that's that's not good. I mean, because if, if it's on film, K-State's going to catch it for Saturday's game in Manhattan. Exactly. I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. But, all right, Fitz. Well, TCU is now 11-0 after a thrilling win over Baylor. Uh, will the Horned Frogs make the college football playoff? Well, they could, but they probably will have to go through a K-State team that's playing at a whole different level um, than they were when they met in Fort Worth earlier this season. But they are the best team in the Big 12. And now that both K-State and KU have seen Texas play, and we saw them up close and understand that TCU not only beat Texas, they did it in Austin. I think we kind of understand how talented this TCU team is. It's not fortune, it's not luck, it's not just coaching. It, it's actually, I hate to say this because he's been a great coach, an indictment on Gary Patterson. They recruited a lot of good players and he couldn't put it together. And, and that's amazing to me because that's what he was so good at. But um, Spike Dykes has come in now and he's, he's doing um, a, a lot of great things. Or Sonny Dykes, Spike's his dad. Sonny Dykes has come in and done so many great things here. Um, all the way down to the details of being ready with your special teams to kick the last second field goal because they did it perfectly. They did it how you want to do it in practice. And you do it a few times and you feel good about it and then you go out on the game field and, and someone panics and has a false start or something. So this was a really significant overcoming of obstacles in this conference. Why? Because anyone who's watched K-State football knows what Baylor in late November can do to your chances. It happened to K-State in 2012, and that's not the only time Baylor's done it to someone. You wander into Waco, and you wander out with a loss and a lost shot at playing for a national title. If TCU can win against Iowa State, and we all expect that to happen, and then beat Kansas State, they're gonna be very dangerous in the college football playoff. And I, I don't know if you think they're capable of winning it, but I think the national media is sleeping on TCU because of name brand, not because of anything that's happened on the field, because the schedule shows TCU is legit. I totally agree. And here's a good stat for you, Fitz. The average top 25 team would have a 4% chance of starting the season 11 and 0. I think that shows how good TCU is and just how underrated they are. Now, they have to win out, given the way that the 
the committee works, they're not going to let a one-loss TCU team that lost to K-State in the Big 12 title game go to the playoffs. So they're going to have to win out, but there's certainly a chance for them to do it. You know, and that's what really bothers me about the playoff mm-hmm. structure. If that was Oklahoma or Texas with the exact same resume, everything identical except the brand, and they lost the Big 12 title game, they'd probably be in depending on who else is out there. And that's not how it should work. Now let's take a quick look at your poll question results. The poll questions are brought to you by Midland Exteriors. Love the home you live in. Call today for a free estimate. Last week's question was, will Kansas State make the Big 12 title game? That's a squeaker. It was uh, an avalanche. Yeah. A1, which was yes, and it was 93% to only 7%. I filled out a lot of ballots to get that <laughs> over the hump. Here's this week's question. It's a simple one. Will TCU make the college football playoff? A, yes, B, no, there's no C. It's a yes or no question. <laughs> make sure you vote on our Twitter page at the Drive 13. All right, that will do it for this half of the two-minute drill, but we'll be right back with more KU and K-State on the drive. JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab-created or earth-created, James Allen has over 200,000 conflict-free stones. Then, you pick your ring setting and metal. And if you need some help, they have real-time diamond consultations available, where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at jamesallen.com code podcast. That's jamesallen.com code podcast. Welcome back to The Drive, fueled by BriggsAuto.com. Welcome back as we continue our weekly two-minute drill. And this segment of the two-minute drill is sponsored by Copeland Insurance Agency, part of your community for more than 60 years. All right, Fitz. Well, Kansas State basketball is off to a 3-0 start under Jerome Tang as they head into a tournament in the Cayman Islands. Jealous. Mm -hmm. Is this team improvement over recent K-State teams? Uh, First of all, on a personal note, I'm really regretting not going to the Cayman Islands. Uh, Look, uh, it's hard to tell right now. They played UMKC before they headed off to the islands. They play Rhode Island on Monday. It's going to be hard to see. It's on uh, Flow Sports, which is a streaming. Good luck. Um, And uh, K-State was a little bit shabby against the Ruse. They didn't look quite as put together as they have. And they had another second half kind of pause where they let teams back in it, but they opened it back up. And, and honestly, I think this was a matter of it's right before a trip to the islands and it was cold. And um, yeah, I just didn't think K-State looked very good. But even when they don't look good, they make dynamic plays. They had an c- incredible dunk on a, a fast break in which Marquise Noel passed it between his legs. Um, and I, they just do things I haven't seen K-State basketball do in a long time. And it's gonna be awfully fun this season but um, they're not real challenged in this non-conference schedule. Even some of the teams that they have on their schedule down the road that have been good in the past aren't good this year. Butler, Wichita State come to mind. And the Cayman Islands Classic, they are clearly the best team out there, which kind of says how the field is. Uh, So they should get off a good confident start as they head into conference play uh, right around the start of the year. In fact, that tips off on New Year's Eve. So I'm confident that K-State is going to be improved, but what that translates to in the Big 12 Conference, I just don't know right now. I can't tell how this team is going to fit into this conference because it's so good and so competitive. They're more athletic, they're more entertaining, and everyone loves Jerome Tang. Uh, So there's a great honeymoon period here, and hopefully they can take advantage of it. But it was interesting, Coach Tang said this week that he wants to continue to play Thanksgiving tournaments, not over the holiday. Uh, He wants his players to go home for Christmas. And also, he likes to be in the Caribbean as often as possible because that's where he's from. And you know what? I support him in that. I hope I can do that, too, and go with them wherever they want to go, even if football's going. I'll make that sacrifice for you, the viewer, and all the K-State fans. I'm a giver. That's what I, that's what I do, Michael. Well, Kansas basketball defeated Duke last week. That's a little bit better than UMKC. And scrape past Southern Utah, which is hard to explain. What did you learn about the Jayhawks last week? A lot. I think to start off, they've got two bona fide scores. Jalen Wilson is playing like an All-American. 25 points per game, just under 10 rebounds per game, and about four and a half assists. 
Those are impressive numbers. I think his performance against Duke was really impressive because he carried the team through stretches. There was a period there in the second half when Grady Dick wasn't on the floor. It looked like no one else wanted to take a shot. And so he put it on himself. I think he got worn down as the game went along, scored 25 points on 26 shots, not the most efficient, but then he comes back against Southern Utah and sets a new career high, scoring 33 points on a very efficient, over 50% shooting from the field. That's the Jalen Wilson that you want to see this season. A really efficient scorer who's going to shoot over 50% from the field and not take a ton of threes. I think that's a huge positive. Grady Dick too. I mean, how impressive has he been, right? The scoring flurries that he brings to KU. You saw it against Duke. You saw it a little bit against Southern Utah, but all season he's been impressive scoring the basketball. 16 points per game, over 50% shooting from the field. Huge for Kansas to have two guys that you know you can rely on, but that's kind of the issue. You know you've got those two. The big question is who's the third? You think about Kevin McCuller, Dewan Harris. You know, Kevin McCuller has not really hit the ground running at Kansas. It's taking some time for him to get acclimated. He's just shooting a lot of jump shots in the mid range, not necessarily efficient looks. Dewan Harris isn't necessarily a score first point guard. KU needs a third scorer to step up. And I think you look at the center position, that's traditionally where maybe KU's third scorer has been. But you're playing someone in KJ Adams that is not a post threat. And you're playing someone in Ernest Uday who is really raw and has moments where he looks like a freshman. So I think overall you're seeing this KU team is one that's gonna get after you defensively. They've got two guys that can score the ball really, really well. But outside of that, they need that third score to step up and they need some consistency from the center position. That for me is the big step forward. When that center position becomes not necessarily a strength, but not a glaring weakness, that's gonna be a huge positive for this Kansas team. Credit to KJ Adams for what he's done early in the season, but is he gonna be able to do it when you go up and play some seven footers in big 12 play? That's kind of my big question that I have. Yeah, this was an impressive win. And again, Bill Self is such a great coach. He puts together teams so well, because this is not a traditional team for him. He doesn't have that big post presence um, that he normally likes to have. And it's, it's really something else to watch how, how well he puts together a team early in the year. And now let's step out of bounds. And Out of Bounds is brought to you by Darius Corner Market. We love local, and we are local for you. Well, Michael, we will discuss this year's K-State KU football game a bit in our prediction segment. But I desperately want to dump the Sunflower Showdown series name. What is that? Can, can we rebrand this? I do this every year. You're new here. Give me your thoughts. Give me something more cool. No, keep oh. it. Are you kidding me? Do you think about iconic names in terms of college rivalries? Sunflower Showdown yeah. has the alliteration. Mm. It sounds cool. It's got the word showdown in it, right? That, that's what you're looking for. Is it the Iron Bowl? No but it's still a pretty cool name, and I don't think you should change it. Egg, egg it's, uh, what would you want to change it to? How about the Wheat State War? What? You yeah. can't use war anymore. I know, I know, but I'm not politically correct. <laughs> I'll use, I'll, how about the Wheat State Tussle? Oh, that's horrible. But I think the battle for John Brown's rifle. I mean, how Ooh. cool is it to have John Brown's rifle, even though it's not really John Brown's rifle, that you put up in your trophy case every year? I didn't know that the state capitol has John Brown's sword, his big bayonet thing, not bayonet, the big, it's a sword, it's a broadsword. Let's play for that. I know it's a historic relic, you can't really take it to your locker room, but it might be dangerous. Can we rebrand this, please? I'd, I'm, you're off the show. You're, you're done. Well, we're going to have a new host next week that doesn't like the Sunflower Showdown. That's how emphatic I am. Okay, let's move on. Now let's hear from the fans. Our fan question is sponsored by Medlark. Retirement awaits in Manhattan where you can live your way every day. All righty. Well, our fan question this week is Fitz, how good is tight end Ben Sennett, Ben for the Wildcats, and how much does he help the offense? And this is from Kerry in Arkansas. It's, it's impressive. It, you have Deuce Vaughn coming out of the backfield that can catch the ball. You have some effective receivers. And now you have Ben Sennett that is a matchup issue. He's like, you know, a baby Gronk or Kelsey running around out there. He's hyper-athletic, he's big, and he's strong, and he has incredible hands. Now, he's touched down at... Um, West Virginia this weekend was a broken play and he was supposed to be in the middle of the field he noticed that his quarterback was in trouble so he came back rolled that way and he said Will could have run the ball but we locked eyes and I knew he was going to launch it Ben Sennett is a man on the field and this is why I love covering college football he looks like a, a monster a beast he comes into the press conference and he's a 19 year old kid with a baby face it's really a lot of fun. He's a great kid, but boy, he does indeed help K-State football a lot. 
All right, well, remember to ask us your questions on our Facebook page and on Twitter at The Drive 13. When we return, we will look at our predictions here on The Drive. Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. I'm here to tell you about Bolin Branch sheets. In a recent customer survey, 96% replied that Bolin Branch sheets get softer with every wash. They're made from the rarest organic cotton and designed to get even softer over time. Try their sheets with a 30-night guarantee plus 15% off your first order with code Odyssey. So head to B O L L and Branch.com today. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Welcome back to The Drive, fueled by BriggsAuto.com. And it is time to head down the home stretch of this week's show. It's time to look at our predictions. The predictions are brought to you by Kites and Kites, Aggieville Draft House, meeting your friends at Kites and the Draft House since 1954. And remember to make your weekly predictions on our Twitter page at The Drive 13. Here are last week's results, and we got a little extra time here, so let's just leave this up for like two minutes. No, take it let's down. Just leave it up. Uh, the fans struggled. Uh, I was incredible, which is ironic because I wasn't in my actual gambling. Uh, and Michael uh, is being really nice. He's just being really nice. He's not winning games. He's making me feel better about myself. Let's move on to this week's picks. Let's do that. And we're starting with KU at K-State. It is the Sunflower Showdown. Um, after, I thought this would be a competitive game. After Saturday, Mike, I don't, I don't, I don't see it being competitive. I just don't. Kansas, or excuse me, Kansas State is favored by 12 and a half points. Will they win by 13 or more? I say yes. I yeah. think this is a hard one for Kansas. I think teams that can run the ball against this KU defense can have a field day. And I just don't know if KU's offense is going to be able to keep pace because it has been wildly inconsistent as of late. So I'm taking K-State to win this one by two touchdowns yeah, or more. I would agree with you on that. All right, next up is Baylor at Texas. I'm going to take Texas at home, minus seven and a half, Ducks, Fitz. Who yeah, you, you know, I, I feel like Baylor's going to suck the life out of this game. It's going to be competitive. I don't think they win, but I think they keep it under that eight. I think they win by seven or fewer um, to get me the cover. I'm hoping for that. Here's our last game of the week. It's Iowa State, the best defense in the conference paired with the worst offense, and it stinks. They're at TCU. TCU's a 10-half point favorite. Do the Frogs win? by 11 or more in their final tune-up before the Big 12 title game. This is actually a challenging game to pick. I agree with your assessment there. I do think TCU will be able to win. I think Hunter Deckers is going to give TCU the ball once, maybe even twice. I, I like that for TCU. He is a generous young man. You are correct. Um, but I think Iowa State's defense will keep them in this game, and I think TCU coming off that big win will be – they've been going through the gauntlet. Now they got Iowa State, and I think they might pause a little bit and make this a little bit closer game. I don't think they're in peril of losing this game in any way, but Iowa State plays such good defense, beating them by 11 or more is not easy. Again, make your picks on our Twitter page, at the Drive 13 And now it's time for our On the Clock segment. On the Clock is sponsored by Carpet One. Buy local for a strong local community, and we start with Michael Swain of Fog.net. Well, hopefully I don't bore anyone here, but the World Cup began on Sunday, and oh, I'm fascinated boy. to see how the United States does. They play Wales on Monday, England on Friday. This is a young team, and they've got a lot of young pieces playing at the highest level in Europe. How are they going to be able to play together? I don't have confidence in Greg Berhalter putting the best team on the field, but can the players like Christian Pulisic, Gio Reyna, can they elevate this team? Fascinated to see what the U.S. looks like after missing the World Cup last cycle. I'm not a big soccer guy, but I'll, I'll just go ahead and continue to talk about the World Cup. I like the U.S. against Wales because Wales don't have feet. <laughs> Look, I'm going to talk about something really serious here about the World Cup. Qatar mm -hmm. got this thing with a lot of promises, including beer sales for fans. And I'm telling you what, as a guy that covers the Big 12, taking away beer from the fans right before the event starts is not a good move. Mm -hmm. yeah, this thing's been a mess, including a lot of slave labor that built everything. Everyone associated with sports, can we stop and pause and think about who we're doing business with just for a little while, because this ain't cool. And that's it for this week's edition of The Drive. We will see you next week right here and all week on social media. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, 
Lost Car Found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.